All right, after a recharge, I'm gonna show you the charging setup for using the ball valves when you're gonna use your Micron gauge and you wanna isolate it. So if you look down here, this is a more difficult one because just the placement, you know, you're getting your hands down there. It's not one of the nice, easy ones. But if you can see, I have a core removal tool off of the T. You see how there's a T off here on the side? So we have two identical core removal tools. And you see this ball valve right here. The handle is in the off position because I have refrigerant in there now. When you're taking the vacuum, of course, you'll have it in the up position. Was recovering uh, or was vacuum between both high and low. And you can see the other ball valve down here. It's in the open position because I have it open to the gauges and I charged it. But before charging it, you turn off. This is an important thing. You turn off your ball valve to protect your gauge because you don't want to get oil and refrigerant and it's the oil that's the bad part the refrigerant is just a carrier for the oil but if you were to charge this and you have oil in your gauges and you have this in the open position the oil from the refrigerant will go right up inside and coat your sensor now the blue vac pro is more resistant to oil than all the other manufacturers but still you don't want to do that because then you'll get the nasty little thing after a while it says need to clean and calibrate gauge and you'll have to go through that procedure. The whole idea is not to have to go through that procedure. Uh, keep them as clean as long as possible. So that's all it is, just the fitting. You see the fitting here? All I did was add a core removal tool with another core removal tool for protection for the gauge. That's it. And it's cool out this morning. We're uh, 64 outdoor bulb temperature, 65. And as you see, my high side pressure, I have it on fresh air, so I'm taking in fresh air from here. Uh, the engine's been running, so I got a little bit of heat coming up, adding warm air in front of the evaporator to give a tiny bit of load. And this is what the pattern looks like on my vehicle after the vehicle has warmed up, before it was constant pulsing, but check this out. So we've got a period of pulses, a period steady, constant on, a period of pulses, period steady, constant on. And this is software controlled. This is all done by software. Let's see if I can get some of this glare out of your eyes. No, I can't. Sorry, guys. We're out in the real world. You can hear it pulsating. Now that's pressure. Now look at our highest pressure is 99 PSI right there. 99.7. Let's call it even around 100. And that's with the hot air coming around like this uh, before uh, let's see I'll put it back and recycle for you but let's go down temperature since it's cold out my temperature is really high look at that it's gone up to uh, 52 degrees as my dash temperature now Sun load sensor is covered uh, cold ambient temperature sensor is picking up cold air the indoor or cabin air temperature sensor is picking up cold air because it was cold last night. And as you can see, we're only 62 degrees right now. No need for cold air. In my exhaust leak, that's what I'm going after right now, is my exhaust leak. And uh, that's it. If I have time later on today, I'll rehook up the gauges and what I'll probably do is I'll hook up the remote uh, thermocouple gauges onto the fittings and we'll go for a ride and we'll see what the pressures and temperatures when it gets up to I think today's only going to get up to 75 degrees or so but we'll go for a ride and we'll see we'll compare what it's like in the morning to what it's like in the afternoon wow really high pressure <laughs>